Hello! Today I'm going to talk about how can you grow from self-employed to a business owner and what are the differences. My name is Tineke Rensen from Powerful Business Academy. I help service-oriented businesswomen from self-employed to a businesswoman and help you double your business within a year, guaranteed. Now, how do you grow from self-employed to a business owner? First of all, I want to give you my definition of a self-employed business. It's about me, myself and I. It's you being responsible for everything, it's you doing everything. That's being self-employed. A business owner is someone who has structures in place, who has a team, who has a lot of automation. Well, that can also be when you're self-employed, to be honest, and um, who uh, does not work in the business all the time. So it's someone who does not do everything on her own. Those are big differences. Usually, when you're self-employed, you have a lot of roles, you have to do everything and there's a lot of things you don't love doing and that's draining your energy. But you, uh, sometimes you're strong, that's how I was, like, well, regardless, I have to do it. Well, it drains your energy and when your energy drains, your vibration lowers and creating and manifesting becomes more difficult. Everything is already there, what you desire. And the next thing about being self-employed is that you are likely to feel overwhelmed. You are likely to not having the results you want because that's a vicious circle. You don't have a lot of time. You therefore, when you, and that's because the result, because you do everything on your own, the results are often not there because you are not an expert in having to do all the things you do. Uh, and you get frustrated and feel overwhelmed and you constantly feel pushed and pressured. You're not satisfied with your income. You feel that it's not growing somewhere and you really, really know that you have so much more to offer and that there is so much more for you to be out there. That's when you start to, if, if you're brave enough and bold enough, jump into the unknown and start with becoming a business owner. So first of all, look at everything you do. Create a list of all the tasks and how much time you spend on them and also how much energy it gives you or how much energy it costs you. That's important. And then, are you good at it? So um, you might be good at something, but you still might not love it. I'm good at the bookkeeping, but I don't love doing it. I'm good at writing and I love doing it, but I'm not consistent. Therefore, we would not produce enough if I would be doing it on my own. Yeah. Um, the next thing is find people to do it for you. And I just come from a Facebook Live and I spoke to someone in the live and she hired six people and still hasn't found the right person. Well, that happened to me too. But know this, every time you get closer to the right person, because every time you know what you don't want, it's feedback, all right? Don't give up. Don't think, okay, I'm better off doing it on my own. It's quicker, it's faster, it's easier. It saves me a lot of hassle and, and headache. Yeah, in the short term, but you will never create your dream business. Are you willing to give up on that dream? Because you're not prepared to suffer at the moment because you seek instant gratification, feel good now. I don't think so. I don't hope so, because you, at some point, this is draining your energy, it's going to nag on you. Next thing, uh, once you have someone working for you, you need to step up being a leader. Yes, you're responsible now for these people, but you're also responsible for their output. It's not them who are responsible for the output, and that's a big mistake. You are responsible for that. Of course, they need to do the work, but you need to make sure that they are in an environment to do the work and to be able to um, be at the right place in their mind, that they have the right skills, that, that, that they might need something from you. They, you have, might not have been clear enough. 
All right, so ultimately their output always comes down to you. I always ask myself the question, if they don't deliver, how could I have done better? How could I have served better? What could I have done differently so this would not have happened? And I immediately put that in place so that it will not happen again. So it's constant feedback. It's constant you are being on the road in growth, growing your business, growing yourself, growing your team. Automate everything that, are, uh, that is repetitive and that costs time. And yes, you can delegate it to your team, but that costs probably more money because their time is costing you money and an automation tool of $10, $20 a month that really is not as much that you would have to pay to someone else. Plus, someone else can make mistakes. Automation, when set up properly, never makes mistakes until there's a glitch or a bug in the system, but you know, that, that may happen. So my definition of a self-employed woman is doing everything on your own. Me, myself, and I. And the business owner is someone who is responsible for the business, who works in the business and on the business, who can take herself away from the business, like I did yesterday. I spent half a day in my garden and swimming in the swimming pool on a normal day, but my team was working. Yes, so... I leverage my time um, and that's what you can do too. Usually a business woman uh, can, a business owner can also have an office. This is my office. Eh? Um, uh, it's not necessarily, but it's definitely that you have systems in place to make sure that your business can grow all the time. Many self-employed business women are suffering, are barely surviving, are uh, making ends meet and therefore they cannot step out of that rat race that's what they believe it all starts with a belief changing it differently that's your desire if your desire is to build a big business that's what you need to start thinking in your head that's what you need to start feeling and don't feel guilty about it. Don't feel afraid about it. You would not have these desires if you would not be the right person to actualize them and to, to manifest them and create them and, and actually make it happen. All right? I help women with this. So I can help you with this as well. So you're not out there on your own. So you don't have to uh, hire six people. Next week I have an interview with someone of for one of my clients. We do the interview, the three of us, my client, me, and the, the person. That's still not 100% guarantee that it's the right person, but I bet you it's a lot better guarantee than when she would do it because she had never hired someone before, all right? And she trusts me, and together we'll do this. Um, and that's just one of the things. There's a lot of things that you will encounter when you go from self-employed to a business owner. And that's a reason why many women play small and stay small. And that's such a pity. Because women, we have so much and you have so much to offer. You owe it to the world to be out there and grow your business. So that more people can benefit from what you have to offer. All right? So if you want to know if I can help you do that, um, you can schedule a quick 15 minute call. I will be giving you some tips. And the only thing what's uh, important for me is to check, are you the right person I can work with? And if so, then we could schedule another call because I am guaranteeing that you would double your income in a year. I cannot guarantee that with everyone. I can only guarantee that with women who are action takers, who are in the right uh, place, who have some experience, who uh, are service oriented, all right? So don't forget to go to our YouTube channel. You will find lots of these videos. <clears throat> and I have to go now, I have to coach a client. Bye-bye.